Holy Week. And this year we celebrated in a way that is very unique given all the circumstances of viral infections and all the sadness of sickness and sadly of many deaths also. But we know that Jesus embraces all that and that's the very heart of what he went through during these days. So we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with and your Holy Spirit. Spirit. It is Palm Sunday because we bless and usually process with our blessed palms. But many of you have brought your greenery, which is all part of the uh, the scenario as well. People came with palm branches and anything they could find from the trees around to greet Jesus. So I'm just going to bless the palms, and uh, but we're not going to have a procession. So, since the beginning of Lent till now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable work. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and the resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. So with all faith and devotion, we commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that we made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. But you lift up your palms. Almighty ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ, the King, in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty ever living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So let's listen now to our reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue, so that I may know how to reply to the wearied he provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance. Neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insult. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My, my God, 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 my God, God, my God, God why have you, have you forsaken me? me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him if this is his friend. My God, my God, my God, my God why I have you, have you forsaken me. <laughs> Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear their holes 
in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, God, my God, 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 why have have you you forsaken me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. My God, 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 my God, God, my God, why have have you you forsaken me? I will tell I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You, you who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Reverse him, his royal son. My God, my God, God, my God, God, my God. God. why have you forsaken me? <laughs> A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. Praise, praise to you, O Christ, Christ. of eternal glory. Of eternal glory. Christ Christ was was humble yet, yet, even even to accepting death, death 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 on the cross. cross. But God raised him high and gave gave him the name name which is above above all names. names. Praise to you, O Christ, Christ, King of eternal glory. One of the twelve, the man called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, Now they paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that he looked for an opportunity to betray him. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus to say, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go to so-and-so in the city and say to him, The master says, my time is near. It is at your house that I'm keeping Passover with my disciples. The disciples did what Jesus told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he was at table with the 12 disciples. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me. They were greatly distressed and started asking him in turn. Not I, Lord, surely, he answered. Someone who has dipped his hand into the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man is going to his feet, as the scripture says he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. Judas, who was to betray him, asked in his turn Jesus answered they are your own words now as they were eating Jesus took some bread and when he had said the blessing he broke it 
and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it and eat it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of you from this, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. From now on I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in the kingdom of my Father. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith in me this night, for the scriptures say I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. At this, Peter said, Though all lose faith in you, I will never lose faith. Jesus answered him, I tell you solemnly, this very night before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. All the disciples said the same. Then Jesus came with them to a small estate called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Stay here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him. And sadness came over him and great distress. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake with me. And going on a little further, he fell on his face and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, let it be as you, not I, will have it. He came back to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so you had not the strength to keep awake with me one hour. You should be awake and praying not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed. My father, if this cup cannot pass me by without me drinking it, your will be done. And he came back again and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy. Leaving them there, he went away and prayed for the third time, repeating the same words. Then he came back to the disciples and said to them, You can sleep on now and take your rest. Now the hour has come when the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is already close at hand. He was still speaking when Judas, one of the twelve, appeared, and with him a large number of men armed with swords and clubs, sent by the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the traitor had arranged a sign with them. He had said, When I kiss, he is the man. Take him in charge. And so he went straight up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. And Jesus said to him, My friend, do what you are here for. Then they came forward, seized Jesus, and took him in charge. At that, one of the followers of Jesus grasped his sword and drew it. He struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Jesus then said, Put your sword back, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, who would promptly send more than twelve legions of angels to my defence? But then, how will the scripture be fulfilled that say this is the way it must be? It was at this time that Jesus said to the crowds, Am I a brigand? that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs. I sat teaching in the temple day after day, 
Have you never laid hands on me? Now all this happened to fulfill the prophecies in Scripture. Then all the disciples deserted him and ran away. The men who had arrested Jesus led him off to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter followed him at some distance, and when he reached the high priest's palace, he went in and sat down with the attendants to see what the end would be. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus, however false, on which they might pass the death sentence. But they could not find any, though several lying witnesses came forward. Eventually, two stepped forward and made a statement. This man said, I have power to destroy the temple of God and in three days build it up. The high priest then stood up and said to him, Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus was silent, and the high priest said to him, I put you on oath by the living God. Tell us if you are Christ the Son of God. Jesus answered, The words are your own. Moreover, I tell you that from this time onward, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. What need of witnesses now have we now? There, you have just heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? And they answered, He deserves to die. Then, they spat in his face and hit him with their fists. Others said as they struck him, Play the prophet Christ, who hit you then? Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You too were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it in front of, of them all, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. And again, with an oath, he denied it. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, You are one of them for sure. Why, your accent gives you away. Then he started calling down curses on himself and swearing. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crew. And Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people met in council to bring about the death of Jesus. They had him bound and led away to hand over to Pilate, the governor. When he found that Jesus had been condemned, Judas, his betrayer, was filled with remorse and took the 30 pieces of silver back to the chief priests and elders saying, I have sinned, I have betrayed the innocent blood. They replied, What is that to us? That That is your concern. And flinging down the silver pieces in the sanctuary, he made off and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the silver pieces and said, it is against the law to put this into the treasury. It is blood money. So they discussed the matter and bought the potter's field with it as a graveyard for foreigners. And this is why the field is called the field of blood today. The words of the prophet Jeremiah were fulfilled and they took 30 pieces, silver pieces, 
the sum at which the precious one was prized by the children of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, just as the Lord directed me. Jesus then was brought before the governor, and the governor put to him this question. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, Do you not hear how many charges you have brought, they have brought against you? But to the governor's complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. Now there was, at that time, a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, Which do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called, who's called Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now, as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. I have nothing to do with that man. I have been upset all day by a dream I have had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to, to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, But in that case, what am I to do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. Pilate asked, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw he was making no impression, that in fact, a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people, to a man, shouted back, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole court or cohort around him. Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak. And having twisted some thorns into a crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him away to crucify him. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golgotha, that is, the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall, which he, ref which he tasted but refused to drink. When they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothing by casting lots, and then sat down and stayed there keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. The passers-by jeered at him, they shook their heads and said, 
So you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Then save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. The chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him in the same way, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He puts his trust in God now. Now let God rescue him if he wants him. For he did say, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. By the ninth hour Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? <coughs> and some of those who stood by there heard this, they said, The man is calling on Elijah. And one of them quickly ran to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it him to drink. The rest of them said, Wait, see if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus again cried out in a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. After that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many holy people rose from the dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, gathered with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place. And they were terrified and said, in truth, this was the Son of God. And many women were there, watching from a distance. The same women who had followed Jesus from Galilee and looked after him. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there was a rich man of Arimathea called Joseph, who had himself become one of the disciples of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate thereupon ordered it to be handed over. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean shroud, and put it in his, in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a large stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. Now Mary of Magdala and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the sepulchre. Next day, that is, when preparation day was over, the chief priests and the Pharisees went in a body to Pilate and said to him, Your Excellency, we recall that this imposter said, while he was still alive, after three days I shall rise again. Therefore, give the order to have the sepulchre kept secure until the third day, for fear his disciples come and steal him away and tell the people he is risen from the dead. This last piece of fraud would be worse than what went before. Pilate said to them, You may have your guard, go on me. All and so they went, made the sepulchre secure, putting seals on the stone and mounting a guard.
was something very special about joining in the parts of the passion. It reminds us that we are called not just to listen to the gospel, but to engage with it. And that's true not just for the Passion in Holy Week on Palm Sunday and on Good Friday, but it's a reminder that we are invited to be engaged with the Word of God all the year round. It's not just the story. And that's what prayer is about on one level. It's actually taking the time to engage, to listen, to imagine, to be involved. Maybe during this week we might do that. Maybe read again the Passion sometime during the week. Maybe read the bit each day. But be engaged. Let a scene or a person engage your imagination. Maybe listen to the words of Jesus addressed to that person, but now addressed to you. What does that make you feel like? How do you respond? Because that's the way we engage well, by actually speaking to the one who speaks to us in his word. There's something of all the characters of the gospel and the passion in each one of us. Are we prepared to let Jesus confront us about that? To share words of consolation, of compassion, of forgiveness. Works of art can actually help us to engage with our imagination as well. Helps us just to think through some of the possible details of the scenario of the moment. And he speaks to us along the way to the cross. He's on the way to give his life so that we might have life. This year, in a very dramatic circumstance, we engage with that word of God and Jesus on the way to his suffering and death. Jesus embracing the whole of humanity's brokenness, all that that means from our sinfulness to our limitations of health, of longevity, our limitations in being able to cope with all the various diseases that travel around the face of the earth, of which we're so very much aware at the Jesus embraces all of that. He's with those who are suffering and dying. But of course, in the midst of all that, there are many who are giving their lives in heroic service, in generous lives of compassion and generosity. Think of all the good neighbours and all the different schemes that somehow are coming to bear on the sadness of people's lives at this time. And I'm sure that Jesus is present and at work, even when he's unacknowledged. All that laying down of life and generosity comes from somewhere in the human heart. It's the place where Jesus is at work and alive. Maybe today we can Pick out those who care and serve Jesus on his road to Calvary, to pray for them. Today we give thanks for the one who came to birth at Bethlehem as a little child, now comes to the fulfilment of what it meant to embrace human flesh. Christ was humbly yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But of course we have celebrated Easter that God raised him high and gave him a name which is above all names. May we have a blessed Holy Week and engage with the living word of God so that Jesus comes alive in our hearts and that that aliveness in our hearts spills over 
anything to love for others at this time. We're now going to profess or believe. I believe in God, God the Father God Almighty, 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 Creator of heaven and earth, and, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Spirit Born, 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 from and there he will, will come to judge the living, the living and, and the dead. dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy, Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, 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 in the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life to the everlasting. Amen. Amen. So gather the stars family. We bring before him now <coughs> our needs, the needs of the church and of the world. For Pope Francis and all bishops, especially our own Bishop John in these worthy times, that they may bring all those who are seeking Christ into a deeper understanding of the faith. And so we pray. Stay with us, Lord, 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 on our, our journey. journey. For our world, Lord, we are sheltered in this time of peril and strengthen the bonds of our community. Bring healing to all who suffer the ravages of coronavirus and assist those who still and are able to end this affliction. And so we pray. Stay with us, Lord, on our journey. All who are working in the area of medical research, that their work may bear fruit. And so we pray. Stay with, with us, Lord, Lord, on our, our journey. journey. For adults prepared for baptism and the children of the sacramental program, that God will give them a new awareness of God's presence in their lives and an invitation to service. And so we pray. Stay, Stay with us, Lord, Lord, on our, our journey. journey. For all who work in our health service at all levels, for all who are striving to bring assistance, to the isolated, the vulnerable, the elderly, they may find support in their local community and for the generosity of donors, their work may be affected. And so we pray. Stay with us, Lord, on our journey. For those we know who are sick, either at home or receiving care elsewhere, may the cross of Jesus be their sign of hope, especially Evelyn Morrissey, Father Peter Golden, Tommy Rose, Pauline Sanderson, Sheila Berry, Joe Rutchard, Noreen Coleman, Norma Hill, Doreen Flynn, Dennis and Margaret Hudson, Una O'Grady, Joanna Monaghan, Alice Thompson, Frank Madden, Joe Yellow, Maureen Roberts, Vincent Duffy, Frank Flynn, Helen and Dawn Charity Smith. Margaret Austin. And so we pray. Stay with us, Stay with us Lord, Lord, on our journey. journey. <coughs> Those who have gone before us, that they may see the face of God, especially. Those who have died recently. James Leonard, Alan Peter Rowland, Derek Grundy, Sharon Murray, Peggy Anderson, Jack Wright, Alan Murray. Thomas Nolan, Chris McKenzie, Margaret Smith, Tony Naylor, Lillian Cusa, Janet Anthony, Charles Valentine, Stella Heath. And for those anniversaries of this time, Richard Davies, 
William Cummins Sr., Peggy Dixon, John Cameron Kellen, Vincent Scott, Margaret Thomas, Pierce Carlos. And so we pray. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for our own prayers and concerns. And I promised that I'd remember Adela at Mass today. She's not well. She's having tests in hospital at the moment. Nothing to do with the coronavirus, but we keep her in our prayers. And we make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 I'm using another of the treasures of St. Mary's uh, this morning. This chalice is engraved and it says it was presented by Mrs. K to St. Mary's Swinton in memory of her husband, dated April 1917, again part of the heritage of the parish of St. Ambrose Barlow. <clears throat> Bless are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread of you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Bless are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine to of you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed God forever. God forever. <laughs> Let's pray that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, hands for the praise, praise, praise and glory of his name, of his name, of our God, and your holy church. For the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Amen. with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. And just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For, though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 hol
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of him of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim Amen. your death, Lord, and, and profess and your resurrection, resurrection. until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis or Pope, John or Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. <coughs> gathered but at a distance we are aware that nevertheless we gather as God's family and so we pray to our Heavenly Father as Jesus taught us our Father hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. 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 Thy will be done.
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the the power and glory are yours forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Aware that though we are separated from each other, that's the reality of so many people's lives at this moment. So as we offer this uh, peace of Christ, we are aware and reach out to all those isolated in the need of comfort and peace. So let's offer each other virtually that sign of peace. God bless you. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you. God bless. Peace. Peace. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, my soul. With that hunger that is in our hearts for what we are not able at the moment to receive, we can make together our spiritual communion. My Jesus, Jesus I, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to separate me from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Um, parish notices. Uh, just to remind you that this evening, as on all Sundays now for the near future anyway, um, I invite you to join in with Christians around the country in lighting a candle a sign of prayers of hope. Um, I think that's a bit risky. Uh, then there are posters for candles of hope that you can put on your door or in your window uh, so that we are in solidarity in prayer with all Christians for our country at this time. And uh, you have noted in the newsletter um, that We've got our Monday Thursday Mass of the Lord's Supper at 7, again on Zoom. And Good Friday at 3 is the celebration of the Lord's Passion. Then we have the Easter Vigil at 8.30 on Saturday evening. And then the uh, Mass of Easter Day at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Um, if you get the newsletter on uh, email, um, there's more than two pages. Some people have uh, not realised that, just thinks there's two pages. There's a, a lot more reading uh, this week, so uh, make good use of it. Any more notices that we need to be aware of from anybody? Okay. Have we all gone muted? Or? <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for all the work behind the scenes. <laughs>